Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you this evening to have a study together. And as I mentioned on Sunday, my goal tonight is to do a study that is going to be aimed at some of our younger people at church. Now, I hope that there will be lessons that all ages can take away from what we're going to study tonight. But I want to especially uh, focus this lesson on our kids. I sure have missed you. I can't wait for us to all be back together so we can have uh, the kind of fun that we normally have. But in the meantime, we're going to study together tonight. So your parents should have gotten a message about some things that you should have together to be ready to study tonight. And tonight we are going to be talking about a battle that takes place in the Bible. And so I thought to get ready for that battle, we could sing a song about being in the Lord's army. Now, I'd like for you to stand up. I can't stand up because if I did, you wouldn't be able to see me in this picture anymore. But we're going to sing together, I'm in the Lord's army. Are you ready to go? Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. All right. Very good, you bunch of privates. You may go ahead and sit down now, and we'll get started with our lesson. Now, our lesson tonight is going to take place in the book of Judges. So let's work on those books of the Old Testament leading us up to the book of Judges. All right, so we got Genesis, Exodus. Are you repeating after me? Let me start over. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Judges. That's the book we're going to be studying about tonight. And if you're a little bit older and you would like to be following along in your Bible, our story that we're going to be studying takes place to begin with in the book of Judges, chapter 6. Judges, chapter 6. Well, the way our story starts off is not so great. The people of Israel were not doing what God wanted them to do. And so the Lord handed them over to a group of very mean people called the Midianites. We're going to let these guys represent the Midianites. They were very powerful, and they were very cruel, and they were so mean to the people of Israel that the people of Israel had to hide. Now, some of us have played hide-and-seek, and it's just a game. But in this case, it wasn't a game, and it wasn't for fun. The people of Israel had to hide. Even if they wanted to do something like get food prepared, they had to go hide or else the Midianites would come and they would take their food and they would eat it. So because of that, the people of Israel became very poor and they cried out to the Lord for help. They needed for God to send them a leader to help them. And that's what the book of Judges is all about, the leaders that God sent the people of Israel. And in this story, the leader he sent them is a man called Gideon. So I don't have Bible characters here at my house. So we're just going to have to pretend here a little bit. So we're going to have to let uh we're going to have to let this character from Star Wars represent Gideon. So, here's what happens. An angel from God came to Gideon's hometown, which is a place called Ophrah. Can you say Ophrah? Ophrah. That's right. Now, hopefully you have a map. So here's my map right here. Nobody is exactly sure where Ophrah was, but we have a couple of hints, okay? So for example, right here is the territory of the tribe of Manasseh. That's the tribe that Gideon was in. And the best guess at where Ophrah was would be right above where the A in the middle here of Manasseh is. So I'm going to put a little O right above that A. And that's just going to remind me, that's Gideon's hometown. That's where the town of Ophrah is. So Gideon was hiding, trying to do some work to help feed his family. When all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. 
But Gideon said, if the Lord is with us, why are we in so much trouble? Why am I having to hide in order to be able to make food? The Lord used to help our people in the old days, in the time of the Exodus. Why doesn't the Lord help us now? And so the Lord's angel told Gideon, you know what? I'm going to go with you and through your help, through my help and through you, I'm going to deliver the people of Israel from the Midianites. By the way, we didn't talk about that name. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Can you say it with me? Mid-D-N-ites. Midianites. Midianites. All right, so those who these bad guys are right here. And the Lord has called Gideon, and he wants him to be the one that God will work through to help to help to defeat the bad guys. Now, Gideon says to the Lord's angel, how can I possibly help win a victory like this? My family is not very important. And in fact, he says, I am the youngest person in my family. Now, some of you are the youngest person in your family. I'm kind of looking around the room here in my imagination. And let's see, I think I see Easton. Easton, you're the youngest person in your family. And over there's Kellen. And Kellen, you're the youngest person in your family. And, oh, there's the Cole Groves. There, is that Gabe? I think, is he the youngest person in his family? And then uh, Caroline, you're the youngest person in your family. And, uh, oh, there's Hendon. He's the youngest person in his family. So some of you are the youngest person in your family, just like Gideon was. But the Lord says to Gideon, Gideon, I will be with you. The Midianites may seem like they are so big and bad and tough and they have such a huge army, but I'm going to make it so easy that it will be as if you are just having to fight one bad guy. Now, the reason the people of Israel are in so much trouble is because they have been making idols. So what is an idol? An idol is something we make and worship as if it is God. Now, we know that God is the maker of all things, but idolatry takes something that we can make and uses it to worship God. Now, obviously, I don't have any idols in my house, so we're going to have to do some more pretend, okay? So the people of Israel were worshiping a boy God and a girl God. So we're going to let these two things here stand for the boy God and the girl God. The boy God, they called Baal, and the girl God, they called Asherah. Baal and Asherah. Not supposed to worship these. So the people of Israel had been worshiping these. And the Lord said to Gideon, I want you to take your dad's big bulls, and I want you to go, and they have built an altar to worship Baal, and they've put up the Asherah right beside that. And I want you to go and I want you to take those down. And I want you to put an altar up so that instead the people will see that they are supposed to worship the true and living God. And so Gideon got some help. And that night he did what the Lord told him to do. And he knocked down these idols and he even chopped up the Asherah. But I don't want to chop up this little thing here. But you get the idea, right? So the next day, the people of Israel show up and they see that these idols have been destroyed. And they keep asking each other, who did this? Who's responsible for this? And somebody says, Gideon did this. And so they say to Gideon's dad, you better bring your son out here. He has pulled down the altar of Baal and he has cut down the Asherah and he has to pay for this. But Gideon's dad said, you know what? If Baal was such a big, bad, tough God, he ought to be big enough to defend himself. So if he wants to fight Gideon, he can do it on his own. We don't have to do it for him. And from that day on, Gideon got a nickname, and his nickname was, to put it roughly, if Baal's so tough, let him fight his own battles. All right. Now, remember, the Midianites, Midianites, the bad guys, are treating Israel very, very badly. And they decide to get some help and to come and attack Israel. But the Lord helped Gideon, just like he promised. And so the Lord told Gideon to blow a trumpet, 
This is what a trumpet would look like. Now, some of you may play a trumpet, or you may have a brother or sister or a mom and dad who plays a trumpet, and it doesn't look like this. But this is what their trumpets would have looked like. This is actually made from the horn of a ram. And uh, I never learned how to play a trumpet, so I, this is not going to sound very good. That's not much of a, a trumpet, is it? But people who can play a trumpet can take this and make it sound pretty good. And of course, in Gideon's day, they really could. So they blow the trumpet, and Gideon says, we need to all get together and to fight these bad guys, the Midianites. And so he sent messengers to the other tribes. So if you've got your map handy, let me show you some of the tribes that he sent messengers to. So he sent messengers not only to all the people in Manasseh, but also up to Asher. You see Asher up there? So I'm going to kind of underline Asher. And he sent messengers to Zebulon. So here's uh, Zebulun right there. And it's hard to do this backwards. And he sent messengers to Naphtali. They're way up here. All right. So all of these tribes are kind of come together to help Gideon fight against the bad guys. So even though the Lord has promised Gideon that he will be with him and give him some help, Gideon has some doubts. And so he says to the Lord, I know that you said you would help me, but I just need some extra encouragement. So Gideon has something called a fleece. A fleece is just uh, something like a blanket like this that's made from wool. This is a blanket that I have that's made from wool. Now, as you can see, this has had some color applied to it. Probably Gideon's did not. But in any event, it would be something like this. It's something you would use to keep warm. And so here's what Gideon says to the Lord. I'm going to put this, this piece of wool, this fleece, on the ground. Now, if there is if there is dew, so do you know what dew is? Do you ever get up early in the morning and go outside and sometimes the grass is really, 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 really wet? That's what's called dew. And so he says, if I put this on the ground, but the ground is dry, but I get up in the morning and this is wet, then I will know that you're going to use me to save Israel. And that's just what happened. In fact, he got up, the ground was completely dry, there was no dew on the ground, and yet he got this piece of wool and he squeezed like that and a bunch of water came out. He could even make a bowl full of the water. So then Gideon says, okay, Lord, please don't be angry with me, but I just need to ask you one more time, for another sign that you're with me. And so this time he says, when the ground gets wet, I want to get up in the morning and I want the ground to be just absolutely covered with water, but for my fleece, my piece of wool, my blanket to be dry. And that is exactly what happened that morning. So I thought maybe we could take uh, a little break here and do a little bit of coloring. You know, some of you guys like uh, Caroline, and uh, Declan and Anthony, you know, remember I used to like to come into your room and color with you before it was time for class to start. So you should have this picture right here that shows Gideon looking at his fleece on the ground. So I brought my crayons with me today. And so I thought we could take some time and uh, color this picture. We probably won't finish it, but we can we can kind of color it. I think I'm going to start by uh, coloring his his hair. Now remember he said he was... He was kind of the baby of his of his family, so he's a young man, so he doesn't have a lot of gray hair like I do. He has solid brown hair, so I'm going to color this in. Hey, you know, while you're coloring, sometimes when you read the Bible and you see something that God wants you to do, you know, sometimes it can be it can be pretty hard to do it, even when you know that that's what that's what God wants you to do. And that was the same with Gideon. God had told him, I want you to go and I want you to help me beat the uh, Midianites. But even though the Lord had promised Gideon that he would be with him and that he would help him, Gideon still had some doubts. 
And so God reassured him. And I just want you to know that. I want you to know that when God tells you to do something in his word, and sometimes you're a little bit afraid or you have some doubts, that doesn't mean that God is going to that doesn't mean that God is going to give up on you. God God is patient with us and he wants to encourage us and he wants to uh he wants to help us. I'm going to color his his sandals now while I'm thinking about it. Now, I'm not saying that God is going to perform a miracle like he did with with Gideon. So don't take your mom's wool blanket and go outside and put it on the ground and see what happens, because that's not the way that God works with us today. You know, one of the ways that God encourages us today is um, is actually with is actually with each other. I'm going to color the ground now. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to look for green. I think there's a green one in here. Oh yeah. Um, you know, God God helps to encourage us by giving us friends that give us help and that give us strength and tell us that they'll be that be right there with us and and help us to do what we are what we are supposed to do. Um, I've got a lot of friends like that. I bet you've got a lot of friends like that. And uh, that's one of the ways that God helps us and, and gives us encouragement. Okay, let's see here. I, I this is probably the last thing I'm going to color and and maybe you can finish this up. I'm going to color that little that little band, that sash, whatever you call that thing here. Let me uh, get a let me get a brighter uh, brighter color here. Let's try this way, right here, salmon. All right. So um, don't don't be discouraged when sometimes you you feel a little bit afraid to do something that God wants you to do. As a matter of fact, all of the grown-ups who are watching this this today, every one of, every one of them has been right there, just just in the same boat that Gideon has been, and just the same boat that you may be in sometimes. But don't give up faith. God's not going to give up on you. Just don't give up. Don't give up on him. All right, well, that's all I've been able to do so far. I'm not a very good color. Maybe, maybe your mom or your dad can take a picture of, of what you get done when you color. I'd like to see your, I'd like to see your picture because I know, I know they would be way better than mine. All right, so are you ready for this battle to get underway? So early in the morning, Gideon and all of these men that he called meet at um, a spring of water, a, a little creek. And this little creek is called the uh, Stream of Harod. Can you say Harod? All right. And uh, that spring, if you look back on this map right here, do you remember where we put the little O for Ophrah? That's Gideon's hometown right there. That spring would be right about where the second S is. So it's not that far. It's not that far at all. So I'm just going to put a black dot right there. But you can see it's very close. Uh, it's very close to where Gideon's actual hometown is. So all of these men that he, he, remember, he blew the trumpet and he said, hey, you need to come and you need to help me fight the Midianites. So they all gather together. But the Lord says, you know what, Gideon? That's too many men. Too many men. I want everybody to know that the reason you won this battle is not because you had so many people, because you'll just start bragging. I want you to understand that it was only because of me that you won the war. So you've got this piece of paper here, and this represents all of the thousands of people that came out to volunteer to help Gideon. So the Lord says, Gideon, I want you to say to the people, if anybody is afraid... You can go home. So this represents 32,000 people. So of those 32,000 people, 22,000 admitted that they were afraid. Maybe more were afraid, but these were the ones that admitted. So if we were to divide this sheet in three parts, that would mean that we're only going to have one third of these people left. All right? So, wow, let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six rows of these people. So that means we're going to take away four rows and only leave two left. Oh, my word. So let's just rip this like this. There you go. Oops, I took the heads off of these guys. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So now we only have two-thirds of the people left. But the Lord says, Gideon, that's still too many. So I want you to take these people down to the water, and we're going to give them a test. 
I want you to look and see when they go down to this spring, this creek, I want you to tell them to get a drink. And some of them are going to get down and just plunge their face right in to get some water. But there are others who are going to take their hand and put it in the water and bring it up. You have a dog. Do you have a dog at home? This is not a very attractive look, by the way, parents. But you know how a dog, like, little, 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 they do that when they get a drink? All right. So he says, if that's how they drink, I want you to keep them. But if they just go and they kneel down and, put, and, and go down like that into the water, then we're going to send them home. Now, many years ago, I got a chance to go to the very place that the Bible is talking about here. And so I went to lay down to get a drink of water, and here is the picture from when I got to go to Israel. So based on this, am I going to get to stay in the army, or am I going to be sent home? Well, I'm going to be sent home. And so when they did this little test, there were only 300 people left. So if this represents 10,000, then 300 would basically be one little segment of troops. Isn't that amazing? One little segment of troops. All right. Now, at night, the, the bad guys have encamped. So let me put them all up here. All these bad-looking dudes that represent the Midianites. And the Lord says to Gideon, Gideon, if you're still afraid, I want you to go down to their camp. Here's their tent right here. Did you make a little tent? This is, this, this is the little tent that I made. I know you guys are way better at this stuff than I am. And so the Lord says, Gideon, I want you to sneak down. I don't want you to listen to what these guys are saying in the camp. So these guys are all sitting around and they're talking. And they all say to each other, this guy says, you know, I had a dream last night. And I had a dream that a piece of bread rolled into the camp and it hit the tent so hard, the tent turned over and fell flat. Bleh. And his friend said, do you know what that means? That means that the sword of Gideon is going to conquer us. God is going to give all of us into the hand of Gideon. And so when Gideon heard about this dream and he knew what it meant, he worshiped God and he went back to the camp and he called out to them and he said, the Lord is going to give the Midianites into our hand. And so he divides them into three groups and he gives each man a trumpet and an empty jar. That's this right here. And a torch burning inside. Now, of course, we should never set things on fire inside the house. So here's what we're going to use. I got a little flashlight right here, okay? We're going to use this. So I turn my little flashlight on, and I'm going to put it down in my jar. And as you can see, that kind of covers up the light. And so what the Lord tells Gideon is you get your men in three groups around the camp. And when the time comes, you're going to blow your trumpet and you're going to shout for the Lord and for Gideon. And so in the middle of the night, they sneak up close to the camp and they blow their trumpets. And they break these jars. I'm not going to break this, but imagine that I broke it. And now that big noise of the trumpets and the breaking of the jars terrifies the people of, of Midian. And then they see all of these lights around the camp. And it makes it look like there's a huge army that has encircled them. And so it says that the people of Israel shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And so they all stay right where they are. But these guys get so confused, they start running into each other and fighting each other and killing one another. And then they run off. And so the Lord gives the Midianites into the hands of Gideon. And here is the big lesson for us to take away tonight. And that is, no matter how many people are against you, if God is on your side, then it's no problem. And if God's on your side, no matter how many people are against you, God is going to take care of you. In fact, we sing a song, my God is so big. Will you sing it with me? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that my God can't do. 
My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that my God can't do. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the sky is his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that my God can't do. That's exactly right. And here is a little memory verse I want to give you. Why don't you memorize this? Work on it this week, and the next time we come together, and I don't know when that's going to be, it may be a few weeks yet, but whenever it is, the next time we come together, nothing would please me more than for, for those of you who've been in this class to just come right up to me and say, Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's the story of Gideon. Well, guys, thank you so much for studying with me tonight. It's been so great to have this time together, and I look forward to getting to be with you again. Lord willing, we'll be together for another study and another time of worship on Sunday. Until then, remember, if God is for us, who can be against us?